Hi, this is Wendy. Welcome to my channel. I have got the most adorable headband project for you today. This will make a great accessory for yourself or a gift for someone else. It's made with only four skeins of embroidery floss. One skein of each of the three colors for the flowers and one for your edging color, which in this case is the green. So it's very inexpensive and it's quick to make and it just makes a very sweet little headband. For this headband, you will need, as I mentioned, four skeins of embroidery floss. And the color options are endless because it comes in so many different colors. And I picked up this floss for 10 cents a skein on clearance. So it's less than 50 cents for the headband and a couple hours to make it. And it's just a great little project. So to start off, we're going to make a flower. And to do that, start with a chain of six, fairly loose. The thing about embroidery floss is it is fairly splitty. So that's going to be the challenge, but it is a nice material to work with. You could, I guess, use a heavier weight crochet cotton if you wanted to or a lace weight yarn as long as it's something that's firm enough to hold the pattern and not too soft and floppy. So after you've chained six join with a slip stitch in the first chain and I should have mentioned I'm using a two millimeter hook here. If you're using a different yarn just adjust your hook to match the, the thread or the yarn that you're using. It doesn't really matter if the headband is a little bit wider. It ends up being about 12 inches long and then adding ties so it'll fit just about anybody. If it's a smaller child then you would just tie the ends closer together and you wouldn't need much of the ties. This one is designed for an adult like shown in the picture. Okay. So six chains joined in a ring, find the center of your ring there, and we're going to make um, a cluster for a petal. So chain four, one, two, three, and four, and then we're going to do three trebles together. So wrap your hook twice, go into the center ring, pick up the thread, Then draw a loop through two strands once and twice, but don't do the third time. Leave a loop on the hook. Another treble, wrap twice, go into the ring, pick one up, go through two and two, but not the last two. And a third one. Pick up a ring, go through two and two, and you'll have four on your hook. Pick up the yarn and draw through all four, and that will make your first flower petal, like so. And we're going to make six of them to make our motif. Before going to the next petal, chain five. It's quite small and fiddly, and it will take some patience, but it will be worth it in the end. Now we're going to do the next petal and the following petals, and they are each a treble four together. So again, wrap twice, go into the ring, pick one up, go through two and two, leave the last one on the hook. Wrap twice, Pick one up, go through two and two, leave the last one on the hook. Again with the third unfinished treble the same way and the fourth one. You'll be left with five loops on your hook like so. 
pick up the yarn and draw through all five to gather it together at the top. There's the second petal done and I'm going to work four more petals in the same way. Chain five, When you get to the sixth petal, you might need to kind of push them around the ring a little bit with your fingers to make them all fit evenly. Oh, that's what I meant about it being splitty. I'm going to try that one again. five and then chain five and join to the top of the first petal. So I am going to join into this stitch right here. It's a little hard to tell if it should be this one or this one, but I'm going to use the one sort of in the middle of the petal. It tends to look a little bit bigger than the other ones. As long as you're consistent, that's the main thing. So pull a loop through there and through the one on the hook, like so. There is one nice little flower finished. I'm going to pull another loop through to fasten and leaving a strand three or four inches long. I'm going to cut it at that point. There we go. And I worked over the other end as I went around the ring. If you didn't do that, you'll need to work it off at this point. But I have already worked over it, so I'm going to snip it off. And there's the flower, little six petal flower. Four trebles work together for each petal. You will make three of each color. And we're going to sew them together in a line. I've already done these ones and I've sewn them together in sequence. So the last pink one needs to go on this end. And you need to pay attention to which side is the front. And you'll be able to tell which side is the front because the V's of the chains face you on the front. If you look at the back, you're seeing the bumps on the back of those chains. So look for the front and make sure that when you're sewing them together, you're putting the two facing sides together and you're going to sew using a small yarn needle like this. And I'm going to sew from the top of this petal across the chain to the top of the next petal. And that will correspond with the opposite side of the other one that gets joined. So you'll see there's going to be three petals on this side and three on this side. And I'm going to join from this petal top to this petal top. And I'm going to work just through the back loop of those chains. And just stitch with an over and over motion, sometimes called a mattress stitch or a whip stitch. Again, a little bit fiddly, but persevere 
and the result will be really nice. Okay. So after you've stitched those two together, just work your thread in through there. And back again. And snip off the extra. Okay, so every flower gets made in that same way for a total of nine flowers. Now we need to make the edging and the ties. Again, very simple. Using your hook and your contrasting yarn, start at the end of the band. I'm going to start at the top of this petal right here. Join the new color, chain one, and then single crochet in that same end of the petal, and do five single crochets around each chain. Again, a little bit fiddly, but three, going around the chain each time, picking up a loop, and then pulling through two for your single crochet. That's four, going around, pick up a loop, go through two, that's five. And again, because I hate sewing in ends afterwards, I'm working over top of my end. The next one's going to go in the top of the petal. And then five more around the next chain. I usually can work quite a bit more quickly, but this is just tiny, so I find I have to slow down and take my time or my hook gets caught and it just ends up taking more time anyway. If you lose track because you're talking and you don't know how many stitches you did, just count the little V's on the top. So I've done four there. And a fifth one. One in the top of the petal. and five more around the next chain. Okay, so now I'm at the next flower and I'm going to skip over to the next chain and do five single crochets, one in the petal and five over here. And then five in the next chain, one in the petal, five in the next chain. And continue that all the way down to the other end. Work around the other end in the same way five in each chain, one in each petal, coming all the way back up the other side, and then joining into the starting chain. So I am going to come back and show you what it looks like once I've gone all the way around, and if you're working along with me, I will see you then, and we can compare notes. I've got to say I'm loving this color combination. Okay, so I've worked all the way around, 
with five chains in each chain space and one in each petal on the sides until I've gotten back to the beginning here. And I want my tie to be right in the center here. So right at that point. So I could fasten off right here and then rejoin it in the middle. But because I don't want to work off that end, I am simply going to slip stitch over to that point and then I'll make my tie. Okay, so in the middle of this last flower between the two outermost petals, I'm simply going to make a chain for my tie. Okay, that's 50. I think that should be long enough. So I am simply going to pull the rest of the thread through, give it a good tug to tighten it up. Now at the other end, I will need to work off my end. So I'll find the center point at the other end. Pull a loop through and chain 50 again for the other tie. If you like, tie a little knot in the end of the Red, just to be double sure that it's going to hold and snip off the excess. So that's all I have left from that skein of yarn. So it makes pretty good use of the of the thread. Okay, then I will work this thread underneath and then my headband will be finished. I think that's really pretty and a great way to use some leftover embroidery floss that you might have hanging around the house from friendship bracelets that you made or your kids used to make. I will be publishing a pattern for this on um, Etsy and Ravelry and it will be together in a bundle with a couple of other headbands or possibly four of them all together. I'm still working on another design. So once that's done I will attach the link in the description but in the meantime I think you can make one just by following along with the video. Drop me a comment if you enjoyed this project and I'd really appreciate it if you would like and subscribe. It really helps me out. Thanks for joining me and have a super day.